how many of you are coming here for the first time? Just lift up your hands. Jesus has already touched you. And you are free today. Thank you. I, I want to tell you that it takes grace for you to be here. I mean, many of you wanted to be here a long time, but it was not easy. It takes what? Already, uh, I'm feeling some things, you know, some things that if I can tell you, because you have been waiting for today. You have been waiting for? To change your life completely. All your prayers are not wasted. Can I say it again? All your what? Your prayers are not wasted. So sometimes you can pray and ask yourself, why it's like I'm not reaching there? So others were telling with my pastors here all the time, like visitors who are coming, they've been traveling everywhere. So we usually tell them that <laughs> the prayer you've prayed there, it's going to work for you here. So can you tell your neighbor that, do you know that God is aware of you now? That you are here. So expect a miracle. The problem that Christians are facing is to be used to God. Can I say it again? The problem that Christians are always facing is to be used to what? To God. Oh, God works this way. Oh, all right, okay, that way. You find that, okay. Sometimes because of that, you find that they derive their own formula. Christians end up deriving their own formula. Like, you know, Nahaman. Nahaman, when he saw the man of God, he said, I thought he would come out and stretch his hand and I will be healed. But he was given a simple thing. Go and wash in River Jordan. And he said, no, me, on my position. So Christians, they become used they become what? And then this, when you become used, you end up having your own formula. Whatever that was supposed to be working for you, simple, in a simple way, you find that you end up doing the difficult part. Many people now, they fast to get results. Jesus says, this is children's bread. When the lady was crying, he says, no, you're a dog. This is children's what? Bread. We're supposed to be getting things easy because God is our father. But you find that it becomes so difficult. Why? Because we are used to God. We are used to servants of God. We are just used to God. We are used to servants of God. We are used to pray. And we are developing our own way of praying. You come here, I shake hands with you. You are HIV. You go back here, you are HIV negative. You find that how this thing manage simple way, but you find that you are developing difficult things. Why? Because at the end of the day, you have got your own strategy. You are no longer going by what God says. If you go by what God says, simple things can bring results. Can I say it again? If you go by what God says, simple things can do what can bring results. I want Christians of Charis to say, who can say. You know, I don't know God. I want God more. I don't know what? I want God more. If you say, I don't know God, I want to seek him every day. Like Paul who says, I want to know. I want to know Jesus. He knew Jesus, but he said, I want to know Jesus. If you people can go to that level, I want to know Jesus. I want, I want, I want every day. It will work for you. But if you go to church and say, I know, I know, I know. When Makaranisa lift up his hand like this, I know the power will come. When he does like this, I know he's going to do this. Ah, how do you know? So that's how you are failing to get your miracle. Miracles, you are supposed to get them simple. Like myself here, I'm simple man here. I must come to God in a simple way so that God will do major things. 
But if I come to God in a major way, major way, if I come to God in, what? in a major way, God will do small things. So I must be simple so that God will do major. But if I come major, God will do simple. That's why people are going up and down searching for solution. It's because you are becoming more major now. Tell someone, my friend, are you major or simple? Major or simple. Okay, let me show scripture. Let me not talk too much because you people, you are here to, to mark what I'm saying. Let me open scriptures so that you must not mark. I will read scriptures only. Tell your neighbor and say, God is going to bless you today. Can we read the Bible, Luke 7? And we start from 36. Look what? A raise. Are you happy to be? <laughs> I've been laughing since from Sunday. You saw me. I've been laughing because I know God. God wants to bless everyone. I'm happy for you. Let's read Luke 7 verse 36. It says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. 37 says, and behold, a woman of the town who was especially especially wicked sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table, at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, which is perfume, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed with the ointment, with the perfume. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he will surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a notorious sinner. I love that word, notorious. Verse 40, can you read verse 40 in your Bible? He says, All right, let me not read 40. You have read it, 41. And a certain land of money had two debtors, and one owed him 500 denarii and other 50. 42. And when they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave and canceled more. And Jesus said to him, you have decided correctly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she from the moment I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet tenderly and caressingly. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with, with costly or, or rare perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, many are forgiven her because she has loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table, maybe you can go and read about them at home. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want us to, we have been talking about love, love, love. But I want us to talk about the degree of love. The what? The degree of love. Uh, because of what we have read there. The degree of love. When we talk about the degree, we talk about the vary, the vary of love. It means love vary. It have got some length. It's not of the same size. 
it have got some what? Some length. Because when Jesus was speaking here, you could see that Jesus was talking about the love that this lady was showing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I mean, if you can read from the beginning, you can be surprised to find that Jesus was talking about there are some people who love little and who others who love much. And how this thing come also. He tried to show it how it comes. Is when you know where you come from. Where Jesus took you. If you know where Jesus took you, you know how far you were deep in sins. Automatically you will love him much. That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was just saying, okay, can you see the reason why people love little is because they know that I didn't do much. Even their sins were small. But now, he who knows that he was doing much, he will love me more. So you can see that that's how Christianity become. Christianity, you know, is being checked in your love walk. Tell your neighbor, Christianity is being checked in your love walk. Jesus said, okay, I can see the complaint. Because if you can see where we have read, the first thing was the complaint. Jesus was invited by a Pharisee. The moment they sit in the midst, there was no problem. But it's only when this woman came, there was a complaint. When the woman came, she understood where she came from. That's the first thing. This is just a woman who understood where. And there's a Pharisee who invites. And there were disciples who always work with Jesus. Do you know that people who are close to Jesus sometimes, there are problems to those who are coming to Jesus. Because if you can see this lady, she's coming and she knows her sins. To the extent that the Bible says, I mean, she was defined as a notorious sinner. But now she understands that, okay, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in deep sin. Now I'm coming to Jesus who can clean my sin. So I must love much. By loving much, therefore, my responsibility must be visible whether somebody is there or not. So, but because of that, you can still see that the person who's having a problem is the one who invited. And also, why Jesus addressed Peter? It means even Peter was having a problem. Hallelujah. There are things that, if you can read there, you realize that that was the main problem of Jesus addressing the issue. The first one, you can see Jesus showing that this lady, she understand that she wants to be showed love. She understands. That's the first thing, because when you come to Jesus, you must understand that you want to be showed love, therefore you must love. Because what we need to talk about here is not the love of Jesus to us. It's us loving Jesus. The main problem is we are developing to be loved more, but we don't love. We want Jesus to do everything to us, but we don't love him. We don't know what he has done. So here, this lady, Jesus depicted him, depicted her as a person who wants to be shown love. So because of that, she loved more because of where she, she understood where she came from. And the second thing there, Jesus spoke about the ability of showing love where the focus cannot be tempered. Because when she came there, she was busy anointing Jesus. They were thinking, but she doesn't care she was carrying on. Because he who loves more, when people are talking, you don't mind, you carry on. I don't know if you're hearing me. This lady, she could hear the first thing, people talking or thinking about her. But because she understood what she was doing there, she carried on. It was Jesus who stopped her and said, this woman, look what she has done. 
since I came here, she's doing one, two, three. Peter, you have never done that. Hallelujah. The second thing that you can see there, I was very, very surprised why Jesus did this because the Bible says the person that has complained is a Pharisee. But when Jesus was addressing the Pharisee, was not direct to the Pharisee, was direct to, the, to Peter. Jesus was not minding about the one who doesn't know about him. We just invite to find out. Jesus was minding about who's close to him. Many times, we don't know that we are so much judged because we are close to Jesus. Whether we are showing we love him or not. Jesus never spoke with a Pharisee. He said, Peter, I've got something to speak about. He says, say on. He says, this woman has done what you cannot do. Since I came here, this woman, she's busy with me. She's busy with me. And Peter, I entered your house. You have done nothing. Jesus never addressed the Pharisee. He was always addressing Peter. Peter, can you see this? This woman came now, but look what she's doing. Many of us who are long in the Lord, we are no longer showing that we love Jesus. It's only newcomers. When they come to God, they want to do the best. They want to do this. And the old people are tired. If you can read there, you realize that Peter was addressed, but not the Pharisee, meaning Peter was failing to do what this lady, the newcomer, was doing. Many times we say, you mafikizol, abaziluto, but you find that who ngaziluto and dalau lap. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. We are required to love more because it's long we are there. But our activeness is not visible. That's what Jesus was sharing here. He said, Peter, eh, if now you come to me and you don't consider how much I did for you, automatically you will love me little. But this lady, because she knows she's a notorious sinner, she's rejected, she's not needed. That's why she come and do this with alabaster oil. But I've been with you. I visited there. You never cooked for me. You never did this. You never did that. But look at this lady who just come now. This was a teaching to Peter, not to a Pharisee. A Pharisee doesn't know God. He can be say whatever he can say outside there. Christians are going to be judged by how they show love to Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus wants you to love him. Tell your neighbor, Jesus want you to love him. The issue of just coming to church because you want bread, it won't happen. The bread will come and this bread that you, will never, you never finish if you love him more. There are better results in loving Jesus Christ. Many people, they think, you know, we go to Jesus, they will patronize him like they are going to Sagoma. If you love Jesus, are you hearing me? There is too much things that will happen to you. If we can read the scriptures there, if I can show you, let me show you maybe in a verse in your Bible there. You'll be surprised to find what Jesus said there. There are two, some, two verses there that Jesus shows that when people are not understanding, he defines it another way. If you read 47 there on Luke 7, Therefore, I tell you, as sins, many as they are, are forgiven. Can you see that? Forgiven her because she has loved what? Much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. Okay, look at verse 48. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. All right. Jesus ended there. So, look at this one. Look at this one. 49. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Can you see that? They were just there to scrutinize whatever he's saying. But in verse uh, 50, Jesus says, said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go 
into, into peace. Can you see there? Go into peace. You know, in Amplified Bible it says, in freedom for all the distresses that are experienced as the results of sin. Jesus was able to say, okay, now I said I've forgiven you your sins. They question. But he went further to say, it's not issue of your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. And you see, when you love, it's, it's a work of faith. Okay, your faith has saved you from what? From the distress which are coming from sin. He didn't say from the sin. He says from the product of sin. There, there, there are some people here today as they are listening, they are facing the product of their sin. When Jesus wants to save you, you must love. After you are love, you are told that your faith. Because we cannot talk about faith without love. I don't know if you're hearing me. As I say, my friend, do you know that we cannot talk about faith without love? When they were busy talking about why he says he forgives sins, he says, oh, your faith has saved you. In other words, you are saved from the distress that were caused by what? By sin. In other words, the problem you are having, it has been caused by sin. Therefore, you are no longer having a problem. Jesus was saying, the problem that this lady was experiencing is gone. Many of you, you need just to love Jesus. Are you hearing me? And whatever you are facing will go away. There are challenges you are facing which have been caused by the wrongdoing, wrong decisions, wrong reasoning, I mean wrong plans. Whatever you have been thinking that you were going through and you end up coming out with some principles or formulas that derive the answer. You find that those things now, you are the ones who are facing turmoils. I'm here to tell you that the turmoil you are facing, it needs you just to love Jesus. Just to do what? To love, tell your neighbor, you need just to love what? Jesus. When, G, when you love Jesus, you will do more. You will worship more. You will pray more. Whatever you are doing, you will be more. And some people who are there all time will begin to talk about your past, whereas Jesus is canceling the present. There are some people who are busy looking on you. You are a notorious sinner. Your past is, I mean, you are, you are shameful, you are ashamed, whatever. They are talking about you. Let them talk when Jesus is canceling your present. Can you see that people, are not all of them are in the church for good reason? Where Jesus is, there is the spirit of God. And Jesus is aware and assessing everybody if he's there because of love. And now, if now you are there because of love, it's easy Jesus can address you. Your sins are forgiven. They say, ah, ah, how can the sins forgiven if we know this person? This person is a killer. We know this person, uh, she has got three children without a husband. We know this person is a failure. This person will rape whom people are talking. Others are talking, looking at you. They are trying to talk about your past, your presence. And your past participle. <laughs> Let them talk when God is cancelling what? Let them talk when God is cancelling what? Your presence. What you need to do is to love Jesus more. If we love Jesus more, the increase of doing for God will shock everybody around you. If you love Jesus more, you will stay in his presence and enjoy serving him. But there will be people who are there to affect your focus. But you will carry on trusting God and say, I'm carrying on. I'm not even hearing them what they're saying. I'm carrying on praying. I'm not even hearing what they're saying. I'm carrying on giving. I'm not hearing them what they're saying. I'm carrying on worshiping my God. When you are looking unto God, they are looking on your feet. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's what I said, my friend. I want to love Jesus. Loving Jesus is your solution. Loving Jesus is what? It's your solution. It's your solution. Okay, let me give you another scripture. Maybe it will help you 
maybe it really helped you. Because I saw this woman, she was so strong, especially in verse 45. The Bible says, uh, same, same chapter, verse 30, he said, he said, since I came here, she never sees. In other words, this issue of seizing. Jesus addressed this woman and said, since I came here, she never stopped doing what she's doing. When was the last time you were praying? Now you have stopped. You know, there's issue of stopping in Christian life. But here Jesus says, can you see, since I came here, she never sees worshiping. She never sees praying. She never sees giving. She never sees. Because the blessing that follow you not ceasing. Oh, if you can check, the blessing that comes because you're not stopping. It's amazing. It makes Jesus to talk. Also to talk about you. For Jesus to talk about you is when you don't cease. Last time I told you that uh, when the Bible says pray without ceasing, it say pray without reasoning. Oh, pray without reason. It means you never cease praying. But he who stop praying is when you find something, you stop praying. Because some people, they pray to get something. After they get it, they cease. Jesus says, since I came here, she never sees kissing me. Some of you, you have got friends who have stopped you. You forget that loving Jesus is better than loving friends. Some of you have got, you know, family that has rejected you. You forget that loving Jesus is better than family rejecting you. Can I prophesy you? When you start today loving Jesus, you are going to shock everybody around you. The results will be awesome. If you read John 14, 15, I love that verse because it says, John 14, 15, it says, if you really, if you really love me, keep my commandments. In other words, we are going to face a challenge of keeping the commandments. Commandments, obey, 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 obey my word. If God is speaking with you, you must do it. If you really love me, keep my ways. When Jesus says, sit here, you sit. You see other people going. Ah, they are going. Ah, what about you? Why are you not going? Jesus said, I must sit here. Because you become honored when you honor his ways. You know, many people, you know, they are, they are shocking me. They think God chose people because of the background. No. Look at this lady. Look at the notorious sinner. Look at your life also. Look where you were born. You were not supposed to be sitting here today. Everybody is required to show that he loves Jesus Christ. Keep keeping his ways. There are many things that will come to you to make you to stop doing what God wants you to do. Are you hearing me? So Jesus said, if you really love me, do what? Keep my commandments or keep my ways. In Ephesians 6 verse 24. Ephesians 6 verse what? 24. <clears throat> if you read there, it says, Grace be to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ, with undying love and incorruptible love. Can you see the verse there? Eh? You find grace when you love Jesus Christ. What's the meaning of grace? Something that you never work for. Hmm. Something you never struggle to get. Ephesians 6 verse 24. You find grace, grace to all, whether you are born in Venda, you are born in Guiani, or you are born in Maputo, you find grace when you love Christ with undying love. 
grace is there. There are some people here who are receiving grace. What is the meaning of grace? You know, I will tell you this thing. Maybe it will make you to understand. Grace is the presence that makes any door to sense you. That is grace. The presence you receive that makes any door to, to do what? To sense you. When you reach there, it opens. When others reach there, it closes. That is grace. Can you struggle when you have that kind of grace? No. You reach to a place where people must struggle to open the door. When you reach there, because there's a sense in you, that door sends you. And from there, poof, open you, enter. So, grace is there when you love Jesus with undying love. I see many people today here that when they move from here, there will be something like a bubble of love in them. Amen. Remember the Bible says, Holy Spirit, pour love in our hearts. The love like of our Father God. Eh? And we can't fail to love. We can't. We can be hurt, but we will love. We can be destroyed, but we will love. I mean, the, Bible, the, the writer of the Romans says, nothing can separate us with what? With the love of Jesus Christ. So we'll carry on loving, whether we are hurt or not. We'll carry on loving whether it's tough or not. Loving means it takes us closer to God and makes us to sense his presence. And that presence makes us not to struggle. You will never struggle again in Jesus' name. That's why I want to love Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor. How many of you, because of your past, you're no longer loving Jesus? Is it not true? Because of the hurt you've experienced from the people, you're no longer loving Jesus Christ. There are some people who have hated you so that you become skeptical. When you want to do something now, you become judgmental. There are some people today here, you are here, you are listening to my voice. The situation you are facing has affected you in a wrong way, but today, God is raising you in front of your enemies. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some people here, because of love, even just to forgive some people of the, I mean, about what has happened in the past. Because the sickness you are having is because of the pain of the past. The problem you are having even now is because somebody did something wrong, you can't forget. But God wants to crush those things so that around you there will be love. In you there will be love. And God stays in love. If you believe, say amen. Amen. There is someone here who is receiving grace. Amen. You know, the meaning of grace is unmerited favor. You are, you are receiving favor. You, you will go to a place where no one can enter, but you enter there. Amen. Why? Because you love Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to this. When you love Jesus Christ, there are things you can't do. Number one is sin. You can't sin. You can't sin. Uh, automatically, when you are given an option to do wrong, you will say, no, this is wrong. I love Jesus Christ. Eh? So you can't offend people because you know it's wrong. I love Jesus Christ. Let them criticize you, lie about you, talk against you, but don't be part of them. Be a blessing to somebody. I don't know if you are hearing that. If you believe, say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, amen. you need to love Jesus Christ. Do you know why people are not loving Jesus Christ? Can I tell you? Eh? Because they have prayed. Nothing happened. That's the reason why. And then they are seeing their families are prospering. And they just look at them. They say, ha, ah, look at that. You know, somebody's place is better than me. It's not even worshiping God. If you read Psalm 145, verse 20. Can I read that verse for you? Psalm 145, verse 20. It says, The Lord preserve all those who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. You saw the verse? The Lord preserves. The Lord preserves. But the wicked he will destroy. The Lord preserve all those who love him, but the wicked... Will he destroy? Can you see the verse there? Eh? You saw the verse now? Eh? Can I get another version? It says what? You saw the verse, Mama? Who saw the verse? You saw it? Can you just read it for me in your language? 
Yehova ulinda bote ba neba mufuna. Hone ba bivote uaba rojo. Yehova ulinda bote ba ne abafuna. Ulinda bote. Ulinda bote. Can I get it with another language? In your, in your English? It's King James. Daddy. Yeah. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. That's the same one, okay? Can I get another one in another language? I love it in Shangang. Who's the Bible of Shangang? You, are, you people, you are becoming white. Uh, I want you to, the more you love the Lord, the problem will come, but you'll be preserved. Is Shangang iri yini? Iri osi shkwembo utla isa yungu wabo laba ngurandzaka. Ayiri isa yungu wabo laba umboloka. Bau umboloka. <laughs> I wanted to hear this word humble I love humble looking. All right, can you come here and read it again for me? Come. Uh, I love humble. You know, there's people who love who humble looking, but they're in the church. Can, all right, can you read it again? Osishkwembu Ushaisa Lava Muranzak. Okay, Ushaisa Lava Muranzak. Ushaisa Lava Muranzak. I resign Gobla Bombolog. Hey. <laughs> Mam Fundisi. Wow, <laughs> Omboloka. Hey. hey Mama, Mama, you are not even really hearing me. You know, you know the meaning of Omboloki. <laughs> Ombolization. <laughs> listen to this. If you can read that verse there, you will realize that. Listen, listen. You will realize that here yeah, it's no longer an issue of. My sin will find me out. You heard the verse there? It's the issue of, he said, himself he destroy. The same Lord who will preserve those who love him. Eh? Is the same one who will destroy. Think about it. It's no issue of your sin will find you. Himself he will come and say, let me destroy this one. He destroy. So, here, if you can read that verse, it says, the Lord preserves those who love him. All who love him. To preserve, listen to this, is this. When you put something in a fridge, you are preserving it for a certain time. Sometimes God will put you in a fridge, in his fridge. Eh? And then he set you for his record and say, by this time, he will take you out and put you in an oven. In microwave, you begin to smell. Everybody began to hear you. There are some people here, God put them in a refrigerator. It's like cold. And you look around there, you find others are coming out from the fridge. You are crying, you can't come out. But today you are coming out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Don't be like those who hope looking. It is easy to imitate people or to become like other people. It is easy. When you are praying, loving Jesus, are you hearing me? Your temptation is the wicked will be like they are prospering on their own way. But allow God to preserve you for a certain time. When God removes you from where you are, to, you will find you are in front. I don't know if you are hearing me. Remember the Bible says you are the head, you are not the tail. So, automatically, why the Bible say you are the, you're the head, you're not the tail? It means, sometimes you see yourself like you are here. When other people are moving. Other people are moving. But there's a time where God will just say, no, 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 you are not the tail, you are the head. He preserves you for a certain reason. People will glorify your God. People must know that you are worshipping God. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are some people here, carry on loving God when it's tough. Carry on praising God when it's tough. Don't look and judge yourself by other people's success. Trust your God in your presence. Hold on and carry on. You will see your God taking you far. There are some people here that God is raising today. By carrying on loving God, yes, it is tough right now and it's difficult yesterday, but not tomorrow. God is raising you in the name of Jesus. I thank God he preserved you until today. As you are hearing these messages, People know your situation. But when you come out from this place, 
you are going to be in front of them in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. When God preserves you, you are becoming a joke. You heard what I said? Sometimes God can use, you know, your stupid mistakes just to preserve you. Your stupid mistake. You commit this mistake, it puts you to a stagnation. You begin to question why I'm not moving forward. So that you seek him more and love him more. When you seek him more and love him, he reform you. He set you in a race. And you put your head before they reach there. I, I want to tell you that there are some people here that their past and their presence cannot write home about. But because you are here, God is raising you to a certain level. If you believe, say amen. amen. Tell someone, say, I'm overtaking you. I'm becoming the first. I'm becoming number one. By a simple formula, loving Jesus. Can you see, it's a stupid way that God can use. You find you are here and the people are saying, ah, you are, you are worshiping God. What is that God has done for you? Ah, you are HIV because you are going to die. Ah, you are high blood pressure. They tell you many things. The family, they are there also because Satan used people you know. Even the people you trust. But if you carry on say, I want to love him more. I want to love him more. I want to. What is it that I can do, Lord? What is it that I can do? And sometimes God can show you things to do and you find that you don't have power to do it and you find that you are not measuring the standard but whatever you are doing in the presence is taking you to that standard where you are seeing so sometimes you can look at yourself and say I, I can't reach there and what is happening with me I want to go there but you find that you can't reach there because you are preserved for a while there are some people here that God was telling me that God preserved them for a reason why because some of you the people around you are not good for you. So he preserve you, he put you in a cold place so they cannot sustain that cold. So the moment when they feel that cold, they begin to say, no, 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 you're not part of us. You're not part of us. When they leave you, allow them to leave you. But it must not affect your love work. When they leave you, it is your time to shine your shine. You are moving forward. Say, I'm moving forward. I want to love Jesus Christ. Can you see loving Christ is good? It's so good that, you know, this won't work for you. It works for others. This will, and you question why. Oh God, why I'm not getting promotion. I'm getting a job. I'm not working home. It's tough. I have to travel. This and that. You don't know. God is speaking. If you reach a situation you can't solve, God is talking. But if you try to solve it your way, automatically you will keep quiet. There are some people here, what is needed today, what God is telling me is, God say, love me, love me. Look what happened to Peter. Can I tell you about what happened to Peter? Huh? Huh? Peter, if you read John 21, you'll find the story. On verse 1, Peter said to the disciple, remember he was given responsibility. On verse 1 he said, let's go fishing. That's it. He, he took them back because already he was discouraged. He took them away, back where he was. He was discouraged. He went to the old profession. He went back there and God, God knew what he would do. Jesus came there. When Jesus came there, he found them struggling the same way they were struggling. They could not catch anything the whole night. Until Jesus spoke a word. By speaking that way, they realized, ah, it's the same man who saved us. It's Jesus. Are you hearing that? And from there, look what Jesus was saying. Peter, do you love me more than this? Because it's after they have eaten. Jesus also gave them some fishes that they ate. Jesus says, okay, do you love me more than food? Do you love me more than your profession? Do you love me than, more than what you are facing? There's a scripture there that I want us to look there if we can go to that, that John 21. 
Yes, I'm finishing. That's what I said. Do you love Jesus more than this? Because here Jesus was proving that love is important. Especially if we can read 21 verse 19 there. That's what I said. Do you love Jesus? The person say what? Everybody can still say yes. If okay, let's read twenty. Eh? No, not twenty. I said nineteen, eh? Okay, let's read from eighteen. I assure you, mostly, most solemnly I tell you, when you were young, you gathered yourself and you walk about wherever you please to go. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will put a girdle around you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Can you see that? And 19, he said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter will glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. If you remember, Jesus asked him questions. After he asked them question, he asked Peter a question, do you love me more than this? He gave him responsibility. The moment he said yes, because when you love Jesus, you are given the responsibility. Okay, feed, the, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do this. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Clean the church. <laughs> do you love Jesus? Yes. Do one, two, three. Oh, do you love Jesus? Okay. You, the moment you say you love Jesus, you are given what? Responsibility. But here, Jesus was speaking more than that. He said, when you love me, you will even die for me. You will even do what? Die for me. You will grow up to extend that you become matured, that dying for me. You can go a way that, I mean, it does not please you, but you will go because you love me. You know, most of the time, you know, many of you here, you are not coming to Charis because you love Charis. It's because you love Jesus. You even hate the name called Charis. If maybe it was go, 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 you will love it. <laughs> but you, the reason why you love Jesus, that's why you are here. Is it not true? So the responsibility that God will give you is after you love. But you can even go to extra miles where you can die for Jesus Christ because you love him. You can do things that you're not supposed to be doing. Because what? You love him. When you love Jesus, if Jesus says, wake up and pray, you wake up and pray. If Jesus says, go there, they will kill you, you'll go. Paul, because he loved Jesus, when Agabus, the prophet, say, don't go to Jerusalem, they will tie you. He says, I'm ready even to die for him. When Peter was told that, you see, we'll crucify you like your master, he said, no, 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 no. Crucify him, but make my head to go down. He, he, he was not afraid to die. If you love Jesus, yeah, when somebody come here and say, I want to shoot you, you say, why? You want to shoot us for what? We love Jesus. But if you don't love Jesus, when somebody enter with a gun here, you can find yourself inside the toilet. <laughs> because he who does not love Jesus, always he try to save his life. Jesus says, if you love me, you will lose my, your life for me. Is it not true? Huh? Think about if God can say, take you all your salary, give it to me. Automatically you say, devil, I can't do it. But is Jesus speaking with you? You can lose your ego or your pride. Can I say it again? You can lose your pride because you love Jesus. You can do things that people will say you are crazy. Jesus spoke about, he said, you see Peter, when you grow up, you will stretch a hand. No, so somebody will lead you where you can't go. Love takes you there. Love takes you there. You won't mind about finishing petrol when you are coming here. You won't, you won't bother because you know you love Jesus Christ. But if not, you are going to sit down, you calculate how much you pour per month and whatever. And you begin to say, the best service I can go is of Wednesday. But if you love Jesus, you say, it's better I can stay in the house of God. I don't care what is happening. I can either lose money, but I have to worship my God. Amen. Is it not true? 
You can lose your life because you love him. But if not, you are going to calculate. I know some people that I once visited one, one of my brother that I won't tell you his name. When I reached there, eh, people who don't love Jesus, they are in trouble. They love to save too much. I was with my wife. And when I reached there, I was told that when you want to bath there, the water must reach here. I say, what? They say, hey, water is expensive here. But he who loves Jesus, he doesn't care about saving. He doesn't mind about tomorrow. I, I don't know if you're hearing me. He knows that Jesus can provide. I'm not trying to say don't, don't plan. I'm trying to say there are some things which are useless. You don't need to mind about because you know that you can't mind about tomorrow. Jesus said that don't mind about tomorrow. Let tomorrow mind about itself. There are some people here as I'm prophesying you. From today, when you are going to give in a task because you're loving Jesus, you are going to be successful. Amen. You are going to be faithful. Amen. You are going to be responsible. Amen. And because of responsibility, you are going to be blessed. Amen. Receive your blessing in the name of Jesus. Check someone and say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. If Jesus say, fast for 10 days, you won't look at yourself on the mirror. Whether you are losing your shape or whatever. Many things we're supposed to have done, but because we are in flesh, we always mind on how am I going to look after this? How am I going to present myself? Sometimes check how you love Jesus Christ. Because that's where your blessing comes. If you love him more, you can do it, everything for him. There was something that my, my wife uh, said when we were together. She said, we are left only to die for God. We will serve him and do everything. But if need be, it's better we die for him. Because the moment you know where he took you, are you hearing me? You know where he did what? He took you you realize that your money cannot manage it. I don't know if you're hearing me. So today, I want to challenge you. Any responsibility that God can give you, don't say it's small. Don't say it's big. Because it takes you to a higher level. And I want to prophesy you that as you are hearing the sound of my voice, you are going to a higher level. I say congratulations. God bless you. That's what I say, my friend. I'm going to a higher level. God bless you. Many of you, uh, you are going to get some temptations from friends, from family. Others will tell you, hello, come back home. Your bag is not working for you. Other friends will leave you, but love Jesus more. You heard what I said? Love Jesus how? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Can you stand up? We pray. If you know you want Jesus, you can pray this prayer. Just lift up your hands. If you know you want Jesus more, say this prayer. Say, Lord, I believe I'm a sinner. I, a sinner. I, need, you I need you more. Come to my heart. Come to my heart. Wash, my Wash my sins away. Clean me from today. Clean me from today. Any, responsibility Any responsibility that come to my way, come to my way. Of, showing to of showing love to you, I won't fail today. I won't fail tomorrow. I won't fail, I won't fail forever. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. From today, I will obey you. I will love you as you have loved me first. In Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice.
God bless you. Thank you. You can see that. Thank you. Keep watching, Charis.